I'm Dr. Emory McKinney, uh, Dean and Extension Administrator at Virginia State University. Okay. Um, have you ever participated in research yourself? I have. What was your the most memorable research project you had? Well, I guess some of the work that I was doing in uh, what I was considered at the time called semi-confinement swine production, I was looking at a system by which small-scale producers <clears throat> could participate in this vibrant swine industry that we had in North Carolina. So I was looking at a system that had uh, outdoor gestation for sows. I had a system of pens set up for breeding and gestation. And then I had a system set up for ferrying the animals on uh, flush under slat, waste removal, but they were ferrying in what we were considering portable ferrying housing. And that project turned out pretty successful. But the thing that most memorable and exciting about it is kind of led to a forerun of what we're seeing today with the pasture pork industry, where there's a lot of uh, interest now by uh, white tablecloth restaurants, consumers, and pork that is produced in a sort of a pasture free range situation. So I'm proud that a lot of the work I did kind of laid the groundwork for some of that, especially as it relates to what's uh, being done at North Carolina A&T State University with uh, pasture pork production and with all uh, some of the growers with the North Carolina Hog Growers Association, some of the things that they're doing. All right, so your, your research project, when did you do that specifically? Uh, this was done in the, let me think, uh, I'd have to say, that was in the late 90, early 2000s. Okay. So you were a professor at that time? Uh, I was, uh, had a split appointment. I was uh, extension specialist and researcher. Okay. Okay. So your role now is Dean of Ag at Virginia State. Yes. How did you come into that role? Well, uh, I had a long career at North Carolina A&T where I was, as I said, I evolved from extension specialist to then becoming a uh, <laughs> research and extension specialist, kind of evolved into some administration, starting working with Dr. Dan Godfrey's dean, very closely handling a lot of administrative tasks. But my, I guess my real first movement into administration uh, came when I moved in as the interim research director at North Carolina A&T. Uh, that was in back in October of 99. I stayed in that position for 22 months. Okay. And then I moved back as the full-time extension administrator, stayed in that position until I left the university and moved to Virginia State in uh, uh, June of 2015. Okay. Went there to be assistant, uh, administ assistant administrator for programs. However, the dean that hired me left and then I was asked to take on the responsibility of dean of the college on an interim basis, and then I was made permanent dean, I think, in December of 16. Is that a role you enjoy? It is, it is. It's a more encompassing role. I have both, uh, I have uh, academics, uh, extension, and research. So all of these are in the college. And so that is the full fulfillment of the land grant tripart mission. Well, I guess I'd have to drop back and say I give a lot of credit to the founders and the people who thought of ARD because uh, it became a showcase for the 1890s uh, to showcase the research capability and the prowess of the faculty that were at our institutions. You know, we are. Whether we want to admit to it or not, we're always in a competition within the land grant community. And the question is always asked as, is it a duplication? Is it duplicity? Should we have 1890s versus 1862s? Uh, have they outlived their usefulness? <clears throat> I think it is conferences like this that prove that to be a false narrative and concept because Anyone that's at this conference can see that there's tremendous scholarship at the 1890 universities from the diversity of research projects that are conducted, the diversity of the faculty and the 
students that are here. We have some tremendous young minds, and I think it is at the 1890s where they had the benefit of a personal nurturing relationship with a researcher that you do not always find at majority institutions. Not to say that everyone at majority institutions is not capable of nurturing, but just the size and the magnitude of what they have to do sometimes does not lead to being allowed to have a more personal relationship with the students. And our advantage is that we have smaller classroom sizes, we have a smaller ratio of student to faculty, and it allows for our students to build personal relationships with the faculty. I myself probably would not be where I'm at today if it were not for faculty who took an interest in me and told me, they said, McKinney, you know, you have the capability to do pretty much anything you want. Uh, I was fortunate that I went through undergrad, I uh, made the grades, and I was afforded opportunities at the end. Uh, I was accepted to, to uh, the School of Veterinary Medicine at Tuskegee University, but uh, I did the unthinkable. I declined, and uh, I went to graduate school at the Ohio State University for a master's, uh, came back, started work, and later went back and completed my PhD at North Carolina State University. So it is because of those formative years at North Carolina a and that I am where I am today.